Welcome to Anglican Origins, the podcast that explores the history of the Anglo-Saxon people, from their origins to the Norman Conquest. In each episode, we'll dive deep into the lives of the key figures of this fascinating period, from kings and queens to warriors and poets. Through storytelling and analysis, we'll explore the events that shaped this pivotal era in English history, and how they still resonate today. Welcome to Anglican Origins, episode number three. In this episode, we'll explore the beautiful and wonderful world of Anglo-Saxon art and culture. From epic literature, like Beowulf and Anglo-Saxon Chronicles, to the intricate illuminate manuscripts and jewellery, the Anglo-Saxons left behind a rich and complex legacy that continues to inspire and fascinate people today. Join me as we delve into the art, literature and culture of the Anglo-Saxons and discover how this remarkable society helps shape the world we live in today. Let's get to it. The period between the 5th and 11th century, during which the Anglo-Saxons ruled England, is often referred to as the Anglo-Saxon period, or the early Middle Ages. During this time, the Anglo-Saxons produced a rich body of literature, art and culture that has had a lasting impact on English and Western culture. The Anglo-Saxons, as I mentioned in my last episode on the conversion to Christianity and the role of the church, were originally a pagan people who worshipped a pantheon of gods and goddesses, including Warden, Freya, Thuno and Tyr. These gods were brought with the Anglo-Saxons during their migration slash invasion in the 5th century from the homelands in Northern Europe. They were also skilled artisans and metal workers, known for their intricate jewellery, weapons and other objects made from gold, silver and other precious metals. The Anglo-Saxons had a rich oral tradition of storytelling, which would later be recorded in written form. One of the most famous works of Anglo-Saxon literature is Beowulf, an epic poem that tells the story of a hero who battles monsters and dragons to save his people. The poem was most likely composed in the 8th century, although the surviving manuscript dates from the 10th century. Beowulf was written in Old English, the language spoken by the Anglo-Saxons, and is one of the oldest surviving works of English literature. Beowulf is a complex work that touches on a number of themes, including heroism, loyalty, revenge, and the struggle between good and evil. The poem is set in Scandinavia, but it reflects the values and concerns of the Anglo-Saxon culture that produced it. Beowulf himself is the archetypal Anglo-Saxon hero, a strong and courageous warrior who's willing to risk his life to protect his people. His battles with monsters like Grendel and the Dragon symbolise the struggle between good and evil, and Spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't read the thousand year old text. His ultimate victory over these foes represents the triumph of good over evil. If you're interested in finding out more about Beowulf in a sort of Cliff Notes style breakdown, head to my Instagram, also called Anglican Origins, where I have a three part series. Each post breaking down the three main arcs of the story. Another important work of Anglo Saxon literature is the Anglo Saxon Chronicle a collection of annals that record the history of England from the 5th to the 12th century. The chronicles believed to have been originally compiled sometime in the 9th century by a scribe in the Kingdom of Wessex, and is a valuable source of information about Anglo-Saxon history and culture, and it provides a fascinating glimpse into the daily lives of the people who lived during this time. The chronicle is written in Old English and is considered one of the most important works of medieval literature Without this collection, our knowledge of the Anglo-Saxon period would be incredibly limited. So to say this book is important, maybe understating it slightly. Another notable work of literature from this time is the Ecclesiastical History of the English People, written by the Venerable Bede in 731, also referred to as the Tiberius Bede. The Ecclesiastical History of the English People is a remarkable work of history that tells the story of the Christianization of England. The book chronicles the spread of Christianity in England from the arrival of St. Augustine in 597 to the rise of the church in the 7th and 8th century, which we discussed in depth in the last episode. There are many other incredible works of literature produced in this time that have been translated into modern English, and I highly recommend anyone with an interest in this era to pick up a copy of their own. In addition to literature, the Anglo-Saxons produced a wide range of art and artefacts, including metalwork, sculpture, and illuminated manuscripts. 
Anglo-Saxon metalwork is particularly noteworthy for its intricate designs and skilled craftsmanship. One of the most famous examples of Anglo-Saxon metalwork is Sutton Hoo Treasure, a collection of artefacts discovered in a burial mount in Suffolk, England in 1939. The treasure includes a number of gold and silver objects as well as the famous helmet, a sword and a ship on which the burial took place. Anglo-Saxon sculpture is also notable for its delicate designs and attention to detail. Many Anglo-Saxon sculptures depict religious themes such as saints and angels and they were often used to decorate churches and other religious buildings. One of the most famous examples of Anglo-Saxon sculpture is the Ruthwell Cross, a large stone cross that dates from the 8th century. The cross is decorated with intricate designs and inscriptions in Old English and is considered one of the finest examples of Anglo-Saxon sculpture that still exists to this day. The Anglo-Saxon illuminated manuscripts are also noteworthy for their beauty and complexity. These manuscripts were often produced by monks in monasteries and they were used to record religious texts and other important information. One of the most famous examples is the Lindisfarne Gospels, a book of the four gospels that was produced in the late 7th century. The book is decorated with intricate designs and colourful illustrations and is considered one of the most important works of early medieval art. I was very fortunate to be able to visit and see the Lindisfarne Gospels in person recently and I can confirm they're even more remarkable in person than the images show online. In addition to their art and literature, the Anglo-Saxons also had a rich culture that was characterised by strong social hierarchies and a complex system of laws and customs. The Anglo-Saxon social hierarchy was based on the concept of the comitatus, a system in which a lord or king would provide protection and support to his followers, who would in turn offer loyalty and services to their lord. This system was based on mutual obligations and responsibilities, and helped to create a strong sense of community and belonging among the Anglo-Saxon people. They also had a complex legal system that was based on customary law and tradition. The laws were often enforced by local leaders and judges, who were responsible for ensuring that justice was done and disputes were resolved fairly. One of the most important works of Anglo-Saxon law is the Laws of Ethelbert, a set of laws issued by the King of Kent in the early 7th century. The laws cover a wide range of topics, from theft to murder to marriage and inheritance. They set out punishment for various crimes and they also regulate the conduct of everyday life. For example, they specify the penalty for breaking into someone's house stealing someone's property or assaulting somebody in public. They also provide rules for the division of property after someone's death and the payment of guild, which is a form of compensation, in case of injury or death. This system was common in Germanic societies and allowed for the payment of compensation instead of punishment for certain crimes. The amount of guild varied depending on the status of the victim, with higher guilds being paid for nobles and kings. This system helped to maintain social order as provided a way for disputes to be resolved without resorting to violence. The laws of Athelbert also showed the influence of Christianity on Anglo-Saxon society. They included provisions for the protection of churches and the rights of priests, and they also regulated the observance of Christian holy days. This reflects the growing importance of Christianity in Anglo-Saxon society, and the efforts of the early Christian kings to establish a Christian legal system. The laws provide a fascinating glimpse into the legal system of the Anglo-Saxons and show just how important law and order was to the culture. In conclusion, Anglo-Saxon culture was a rich and complex society that produced a wealth of art, literature and culture that had a lasting impact on English and Western culture. The Anglo-Saxons were a people who were deeply committed to their values and beliefs and they left behind a legacy that is still celebrated and admired today from the epic heroism of Beowulf to the intricate designs of the Sutton Hoo treasure, the art and culture of the Anglo-Saxons continues to inspire and fascinate people around the world. And that's all for this episode. Again, I want to thank you for spending some of your time with me. I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did like this episode and you haven't already, I highly encourage you to go back and check out my other two episodes that are already out, where I discuss the migration of the Anglo-Saxons and the conversion of Christianity. Also, please like, rate, and follow the podcast to help it grow. And don't forget to set notifications as well so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time, thank you again, and stay curious. Bye-bye.